archaeological evidence. Now, archaeology could never prove that the Bible is divinely inspired, but it does help build a compelling case for the historical reliability of the Bible. Of course, many critics of the scriptures today believe that the persons and places and events mentioned in the Bible are mythological, uh, inventions of first century authors. Well, it's the advance of archaeology that is disproving that skeptical viewpoint in our generation. For the past 150 years, archaeologists have been verifying the exact truthfulness of the Bible's detailed records of various events, customs, persons, cities, nations, and geographical locations. The Bible has proven so accurate that archaeologists now even refer to it as a reliable guide when they go out to dig in new areas. Let me tell you about this man on the cover of Time magazine. His name is Dr. Nelson Gluck. He's considered to be one of the greatest archaeologists to have ever have lived. In fact, he's been credited with more than 1,500 discoveries that are on display in hundreds of museums around the world today. Now, when he weighed in on whether or not archaeology has disproved or validated the Bible, here is what this renowned archaeologist had to say. He said, quote, it may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted, in other words, overturned or disproved a biblical reference. Scores of archaeological findings have been made which confirm in clear outline or in exact detail historical statements in the Bible. And by the same token, proper evaluation of biblical descriptions has often led to amazing discoveries, end quote. So you don't need to take my word for it. You can take his. Now, by 1958, Donald Wiseman, an archaeologist and professor of Assyriology at the University of London, estimated that there were more than 25,000 archaeological discoveries that have confirmed the truthfulness of the Bible. There are a couple of things that are staggering about this enormous number of discoveries. First off, less than 1% of the dirt in Israel has even been excavated by archaeologists. So there are literally thousands of additional discoveries just waiting to be found. A second thing I find staggering about this uh, large number of discoveries is that that was the estimate back in 1958. There have been lots of discoveries since then. I want to share with you a few of them here tonight. This first one has to do with a man by the name of Pontius Pilate. The New Testament authors tell us that Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Judea at the time of Christ who oversaw Jesus' trial and then sentenced him to death by crucifixion. Was he a legendary figure perhaps that the New Testament authors just invented just to you know, create a villain in the whole story they were making up about Jesus? No. In June of 1961, a team of Italian archaeologists was digging here in the Mediterranean port city of Caesarea. While digging in the jumbled ruins of this theater, these archaeologists made an amazing discovery. They found this stone bearing an amazing inscription. Here is what it said. Pontius Pilate. Prefect of Judea has presented the Tiberium to the Caesareans. This is an amazing evidence outside of the Bible that Pontius Pilate was an actual historical person, that he reigned in the very position ascribed to him by the Gospels, and that as prefect he would have had the authority to condemn or pardon Jesus, just as the Gospel accounts report. Another amazing discovery was found in 1993 in the town of Dan, a little to the north of the Sea of Galilee. Now, up until 1993, there was not a shred of evidence anywhere outside of the Bible that David, the king of Israel, ever lived. And so critics of Christianity and Judaism, the Bible in general, used to bring this up. And they'd say, well, how can you Christians and Jews believe these stories? I mean, here's the most beloved and powerful king in all of Israel's history. And he's not mentioned anywhere outside of the Bible? That sounds pretty suspicious to us. Well, their skepticism came crashing down in 1993 when this stone was discovered. Mentioning David, 
the king of Israel. Even Time Magazine, as unfriendly as they can be toward Christianity, acknowledged that the skeptics' claim that King David never existed is now hard to defend. Indeed it is. A third discovery has to do with the man who was the Jewish high priest at the time of Jesus. The New Testament Gospels tell us that his name was Caiaphas. Was he an invention? No. In 1990, a team of construction workers building a water theme park just south of Jerusalem accidentally discovered his entire family's burial site, including this limestone bone box containing Caiaphas's bones and an inscription on the outside with his first and last name. An amazing discovery. Some other discoveries include the ruins of Nineveh. Of course, Nineveh was long thought to be a mythological city, just part of a big fish story because of its association with the book of Jonah uh, until they found it. Uh, Hezekiah's tunnel has been excavated, mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 20. The ruins of the Hittite civilization talked about in Genesis chapter 15. Critics for a long time thought that uh, they were a mythological people because they were only found in the Bible. Well, that view has been overturned by archaeology. Uh, the ancient ruins of Babylon in modern-day Iraq have been excavated. This is, of course, where Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego spent many years of their life. You can go to Iraq today and walk around some of the ruins there. The Pool of Siloam was discovered a few years ago. This is the very place mentioned in John chapter 9 where Jesus sent the blind man to wash the mud off of his eyes and where his eyes were opened up. Jacob's well, mentioned in John chapter 4, has been identified. Uh, you've seen a photograph of it there. It's now covered uh, by a Greek Orthodox church, but the well still produces fresh spring water. This is the very well where Jesus sat down with the Samaritan woman there in John 4. The pool of Bethesda has been excavated. This is the pool where Jesus told that man who had been lame for 38 years to take up his bed and walk. Herod's palace has been excavated, spoken about in Mark chapter 6. This is the very place where John the Baptist was imprisoned and killed. The Roman historian Josephus even mentions this very palace and the fact that John the Baptist was imprisoned and murdered there. We'll talk more about Josephus later on. Another discovery was the synagogue in Capernaum. This is the site in Capernaum on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee where Jesus himself often taught. Another discovery was announced on November 5th, 2005, just a few years ago. In Megiddo, in northern Israel, archaeologists discovered the remains of one of the oldest Christian churches ever discovered. Evidence reveals that this building dates back to about 230 AD. The remains of this structure included a Greek-style mosaic floor that bore an amazing inscription. What you're about to see is the very first archaeological discovery mentioning Jesus Christ. Here it is on the screen for you. Foxnews.com reporting on this amazing discovery. Reported this, two mosaics inside the church, one covered with fish, an ancient Christian symbol that predates the cross, tell the story of a Roman officer and a woman named Akitos who donated money to build the church in the memory of the God, Jesus Christ. The God Jesus Christ, notice that. Not only does this recent discovery help reinforce the fact that Jesus was a real historical person, but it helps verify that the early Christians believed that Jesus was God. Now, I mention this because there are people like Dan Brown, the author of The Da Vinci Code and The Jehovah's Witnesses Today, who say that the church invented the deity of Christ sometime in the 4th century. Well, this discovery in Megiddo demonstrates that this belief was in place long before then. So you can go to Israel today and see these and thousands of additional discoveries with your own eyes. They are an amazing evidence of the Bible's trustworthiness. Now, archaeology has not proven helpful at all for other religious writings, especially the Book of Mormon. Not one piece of evidence has ever been found 
to support the Book of Mormon. None of the large cities it names have ever been located. No ruins, no coins, no letters or documents, no monuments, nothing in writing. None of the rivers, mountains, or topography mentioned in the Book of Mormon has ever been identified. In fact, nothing which demonstrates that the Book of Mormon is anything other than an early 19th century piece of American fiction invented by Joseph Smith has ever been found. I talk a lot more about the problems with the Book of Mormon in my DVD on Mormonism, if that might interest you. If you'd like to do further uh, reading on the topic of archaeology and how it's verified the truthfulness of the Bible, I have a book on that topic as well, and both of those can be accessed through our website at alwaysbeready.com.